Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. You know, every year we have something at this time of the year that we call harvest, where we celebrate God's goodness to us in the beginning of October, somewhere in the middle of October. And I want to dedicate these devotions this week to this. And I want to start from Genesis chapter 22, talking about in your seed. That's today's title, in your seed. Jesus being the seed that God promised that in the seed of Abraham, Jesus being that seed, he would bless every human being. And so that's such a phenomenal promise that God gives and has fulfilled and does fulfill every day that his blessings overtake us because of what Jesus has done for us. And we see here such an incredible, powerful prophetic picture that God gives of Christ offering himself up to the Father in the sweet spirit of the Holy Spirit as a well-pleasing sacrifice. And that that is prophetically pictured here in Abraham offering up Isaac. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 talks about this, how in figure, in figuratively Isaac was offered and Abraham figuratively received Isaac back from the dead. And it, it's absolutely amazing how God has made things so clear for you and me to be able to grasp of what he has done for us through Jesus. So here in Genesis chapter 22, verse seven, Isaac spoke to Abraham. I find this so amazingly beautiful. And he says, my father. And Abraham said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? What a question. Where is the lamb? Oh, praise God, I know where the lamb is. Is it the right hand of God who was sacrificed for me on Calvary's cross? Where is the lamb? And Abraham, being a prophet, spoke by God's spirit and said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Right there, the two of them went, they went, they continued. I want to encourage you with this first thought. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't give up. Don't say, oh, it doesn't matter anymore. My life is worthless. Oh, what's the use of living? Don't give up. Continue. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is yours. God has given him for you. And they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built the altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abram lifted his eyes and looked there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and he offered it for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh or the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided for you. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. And he said to him, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord. Oh, this is so powerful. Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is by the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed, here comes the title of the message, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And the book of Hebrews teaches us by these two unchangeable things, God has given us such an assurance that we have what he has promised, even when it's not visible yet, that we have this blessed assurance by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath. 
we are given an absolute guarantee of salvation in Christ. So our faith can be unmovably steadfast knowing that what God has promised, He will do by His promise and His oath. His promise in Christ, He blesses you. His oath in Christ, He blesses you. Oh, what a good thing. And I want you to see this today. In your seed. You see, friends, the Bible teaches us that God, in the book of Genesis, made a promise to humanity that as long as seed, time, and harvest shall remain. You see, God had provided seed for the sower, it says in the scripture. God gives seed. You see, God had given Abraham Isaac. If you know the story, you know how Sarah was barren, but how God had promised that his seed would be like the stars of heaven in Genesis 12. 25 years later, Isaac was born when Sarah was 91 and Abraham was 100 years of age. And Isaac was born not by the will of man because Abraham was as good as dead, the scripture says, and Sarah's womb was dried up, plus she was barren. And yet she conceived and brought forth a son because God promised it. In other words, that which is born of the Spirit, that which comes by the will of God, even true about you and me. We have had our natural birth, but the natural man dies. But we have had a new birth through Christ. We are born of the Spirit. We're made alive with Christ, and we have a spirit birth as children of God. And you see, it's the seed that made the difference. Abraham sowed the seed that God gave him. He didn't keep it when God says, now take your son, your only son whom you love, and offer him on the place that I will show you. Abraham didn't hesitate. He immediately sowed the seed. And because he sowed it, he gave it to God. God is able to give it back. And that is the key to true harvest. You see, the children of Israel, we read about in, in the book of Malachi, when the Lord talks about the tithe, which is the first part. You see, Isaac was the first of Abraham's strength that Abraham gave to God. And because God was the possessor of Isaac, from then on, he called all of Abraham's children, my children. He said, I am your God, you are my children, I am your father, you are my wife, I am your husband. In other words, I am the one who, who owns you. That was because the seed Abraham sowed. And I believe in sowing seed, folks. But in the book of Malachi, the Lord had to deal with his children because they were not giving God their first. They were not giving God their best. They were giving God leftover. And when you fall spiritually to the place where you barely even give God your leftovers, then why would you think that your harvest not be affected by that? That what you reap in life is not all that God, it could be. I want to encourage you, don't ever give God your leftover. Give Him your best. I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, and we see Jesus, the seed, and how it says there, this beautiful statement. Oh, this is so powerful. This is 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, the Amplified Translation. You are becoming progressively acquainted with and recognize more strongly and clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, His kindness, His gracious generosity, His undeserved favor and spiritual blessing, and that though He was so very rich, being God, you know, yet for your sakes He became so very poor in order that by His poverty you might become enriched and abundantly supplied. Jesus is the firstborn of creation, the new creation. And God gave him. And it says in Romans 8, verse 31, if God, not sparing his only begotten son, but delivered him up for, him, for us all, how will he not with him freely give us all things? Come on, if God gave Jesus for you, he will give you all things. It all has to do with God looking you in the eyes and saying, I'm giving you my best because you are worth it. I love you. And I want to ask you, is God worth it for you to give him 
the best, the best of your increased finances. When God's provided an income for you, all the earth is His. It all belongs to Him. David says in 1 Chronicles 29, who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give so richly, so freely as this, when everything belongs to you and of your own hand we give, Father. Do you honor God with tithes and offerings? Do you give him the first part? Do you give him the best? Come on. Everything has to do with the seed. The seed that you sow that will determine the harvest you reap. And I want to encourage you, let the Lord put it in your heart to sow good seed. Because remember this, it says in verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 9, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly. In other words, you have no more joy in giving. You know, the first thing when Virginia and I receive a salary or an income or a gift or anything, the first thing she'll look at me, she says. In other words, have you... If you give them the tithe. First thing, folks, we do it first. Not wait to see what we have left out. No, first. First. Not net gross, because that's the income, not the net. Taxes come. We, we, we give our, yeah, we pay our taxes, but to us, that second is no first. God's first. God's first. Put God first. Put God first. And if you sow that seed of putting God first, you'll watch and see his blessings overtake you and him open the windows of heaven and pouring out such blessing. But don't do it grudgingly. Don't feel robbed. Don't feel like, oh, I need that money. No, it's not yours. It belongs to God. Honor him. Not begrudgingly. It says here, this he who sows sparingly or grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. But he who sows generously, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generously with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, takes pleasure in, prizes above all the things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful joy, is prompt to do it, giver whose heart is in his giving. And God, listen now, verse 8, is able to make all grace, every favor, earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always, under all circumstances, whatever the need may be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. As it is written, he, the benevolent person, scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever. For God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating, will also provide to multiply the resources for sowing and increase the fruit of your righteousness, which manifests itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. Wow. I want to encourage you today. Honor God with your finances. So let your spirit be in the seed. Let your heart be in your giving, as he says here in 2 Corinthians 9. Let your heart be in your giving. Let it be a joy to you to honor God. The tithe always goes to your own local church, your own local church. That's your church. That's where your tithe goes and your offerings. I want to encourage you, be a generous giver. But lastly, in closing, give your best of your heart, your spirit, your life. First at home, to your own family members, to your own family, and then to the people around you, everywhere. Always honor God by the spirit of generosity. My father one time made a statement to me from Philippians chapter 4 where it says, let your forbearing spirits be known to all men. The word forbearing actually says, let your kindness, unselfish friendliness be known to all men. My father one time said to me, son, remember always to be kind to everybody. And I want to encourage you, that is a, a sowing of seed. 
when you're kind and gracious and generous and, and, and friendly to everybody, I tell you the truth, it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, as Jesus says in Luke 6, 38, it will be poured into your own heart, into your own life by God who watches you and your giving. Have a wonderful week and God bless you.